The tutorial. We've all done it, and most of us have forgotten it, including me. Until now. There I was, staring at the main menu for an unknown reason, when I spotted the tutorial. I decided to try it out again, cause why not? And I got an idea. Why don't I try to not only escape the undead that swarms me, but also see how long I can survive in the tutorial. Well, old friend, we meet again. So here I am in the tutorial. All I remember is that what Spiffo says, this little fella, throughout the tutorial is pretty funny. At first you have to zoom out and zoom in. And, and then he says, you're great at this. Then you gotta walk a little and... Uh oh, dead person alert. Then you pick up an empty bottle and a mouse and are forced to eat it. That's better, apart from the nausea. Sneak up to a zombie and kill it. Take that, mom. The frying pan broke. Your mother's skull was really thick. Jesus. Sneak up to another zombie behind this fence. Wow, it's like you're invisible. I mean, we've maxed out your skills here, but that is impressive. What? No, you didn't. This is some special forces stuff right here. You did it. No more daddy issues. Dad was a prepper, but he didn't prepare for you, did he? I love this game. Then you are taught how to apply bandages, put on clothes, jump over tall fences, and shoot any gun. They're all dead. So sad. And finally, you're taught how to take the antidote. Last advice, if you ever get a zombie bite or fear one is imminent, then press Q and you'll swallow the antidote. Hey, I'm over here. Only kidding. All hope is gone. There is no antidote. Have fun! What do you mean, have fun? Oh my god! No, please, get away from me! Why would you die? Oh god, there's too many! There's too many of them! Okay, now that I know what to expect, I'm heading in with a plan. See, once I get through the actual tutorial, I'll run off in one of the corners of the map and pick off the ones who are actually following me. Alright, attempt number two. So I quickly ran through the tutorial, and here I am. I'll run this way since there's a strange building here. Like, the building itself is fine, but what's inside is strange. Here it is, just look. What is this? Was I being monitored? Anyhow, I run off to another corner and speed up time and wait for those few zombies to arrive. But when they do, I quickly get overwhelmed. And that's when I realize is that they all know my location. The reason all of them aren't on me right now is because some of them are too busy breaking barricades. So I kill some more and plan to just run in circle. Oh, uh, my game crashed. All right, well, attempt number three. It didn't go well. Just like attempt number two, I ran in circles, killing them one by one, nice and slow, when this happened. Oh my god. Lesson learned, do not approach a large group breaking a barricade. Attempt number four went really well. It's during this attempt where I found out that there are somewhat secret things Spiffo can say if you don't follow the orders he gives you. There's one where if you close this window right after you open it, he says that was incorrect. Do not break with the cycle. Tap E to reopen the window before we consider termination. There's another one that appears where you have to sneak behind a fence. All you do is crawl away and stand up. Do as we request. This is wasting time and money. Sneak to the gate in the fence. Now. Oh, and here's another. If you just stand in place for a long time, he says, subscribe to SQZ and don't forget to- Now, like I said, this attempt went really well. So much so that I got rid of all the zombies who were following me, but not all the zombies on the map. But while doing so, I realized I was limited in what I could do. Let me explain. In the tutorial, the only thing you can interact with, item-wise, is clothing. You cannot eat anything, you cannot drink anything, and you cannot right-click on anything, except for clothing. This wasn't really a problem since it didn't seem like I was getting hungry or thirsty. So other than those limitations, maybe I can also not get hungry and thirsty in the tutorial. So I headed off to that building 
and decided to wait out my time and boy was time slowed down. This is sped up by three times. For reference, this is what the default time looks like when it's sped up. By default, one day is one hour in real time. So now, all I can do is wait and wait and wait. Oh, hey, look, I can get hungry and thirsty. Wait, I can get hungry and thirsty. Yeah, I was wrong. I can get hungry and thirsty, but this is bad news because remember, I can't eat or drink anything. So all I can do is accept what's coming. Oh no, I'm starting to die of thirst. No, it's over. One day and four hours is how long I could survive. You know, I wish I could have done more. Maybe I could have done some foraging and all that good stuff, but I was very limited in what I could do and had no idea what to do to survive any longer. But then I thought of something the next day. I was thinking maybe I could just change the code in the game's files to somehow remove all these limitations. I mean, how hard could it be? Uh, um, what if I, no, wait, open Easter egg door. Um, uh, yeah, this isn't going to work out. So I got to thinking again and decided to sit down and learn how to make a map for the game. I watched a couple tutorials by Blackbeard and Daddy Dirky Dirk. Thank you guys so much for making these. You guys are a godsend. But once I was done watching them, I was at pretty much 30% completion. And I realized this would take too much time. Then I thought, why don't I just take the map's files and turn them into a separate world? And it worked, but there were two problems. There were no zombies, and the foraging zones were a little messed up, in my opinion. But to add them, I needed completely different files. Luckily, there is a GitHub repository by Unjammer. All the files I need. Thank you, Unjammer. Seriously, thank you. You are also a godsend. So I went in and changed the forging zones, added zombie spawns, and it works perfectly. Yeah, there aren't as many zombies as there are in the tutorial, but there also aren't any barricades to distract them with, so I think it's pretty fair. If you'll be interested in playing on this map, I've uploaded the map to the workshop, and the link to it is in the description. Alright, I'm gonna try out this map that I've put together. Now since the zombies knew where I was, I'll try to do something similar here by changing memory to long, sight to eagle, and hearing to pinpoint. I won't have any traits or occupation, because when I went to the info tab of the character in the tutorial, there were no traits present. Oh, and her name was Jane Doe, which will be the same name we'll have for our little character here. Okay, we're ready. Let's do this. Now, stuff does spawn in these containers, but since we were provided with pretty much nothing in the tutorial, I won't be taking any of it. Let's see who's around. Oh, and they've already spotted me. I've got to get myself a weapon so I can deal with these folks. I'm exhausted already? Just like in the tutorial, I decided to run off to a corner of the map, pick them off one by one, hoping the trees would slow them down. Ooh, a backpack. And then I saw an opportunity to get myself a weapon. Metal bar come to me. Now, even though I have a weapon, being exhausted meant I could barely do anything, since every zombie is coming for me. I kept running in circles, killing them slowly, and then one came to me with a shotgun, which I used ineffectively. Because remember, no traits or occupation? Yeah, this is gonna take a while. But nevertheless, running around in circles was all I could do, since there were so many zombies left. And while doing so, I decided to do some foraging, since I worked up such an appetite. Okay, how do I do this? Do I just walk around and hope something pops up? Oh, I found something. Twigs, lemongrass, and mushrooms. Hell, this is actually pretty fun. Now, I don't know if these mushrooms are poisonous or not, but I have nothing else to eat, so I'm risking it. Oh no, that's not good. Oh my god, do they ever end? Oh no, 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 no! No, no.
And there goes attempt number five. Let's try again. For attempt number six, I decided to bring along some traits. These traits. Mainly so I can put up an actual fight against the undead. Now once I spawned, I ran around to get the zombies attention. And I grabbed some metal pipes to defend myself. I kept running around in circles, killing the undead in the process, and did some forging while doing so. It took me one day to kill every zombie on the map. Peace at last. And what else was there to do other than forge? I mean, it is fun, at least to me it is. I get that little bit of excitement when finally finding something, and if it's mushrooms or berries, oh you bet I'll have a smile on my face. Now at first I could find a bunch of stuff, especially food. But now, there's like, nothing. You know, I get it. I looted everything, but man, please, something. I've gotten so desperate that I started collecting maggots from the rotting corpses of the undead. It doesn't say it's dangerous or anything. I have nothing else to eat. I'm forced to eat these maggots. I think I'll be fine. Oh no, what did I do wrong? All I did was eat those maggots. It doesn't say it's dangerous or anything. The rotting corpses of the undead. I think I'll be fine. And then I realized what I had done. Food poisoning is what killed me, if you were wondering. Well, attempt number seven. Here I come. This time I decided to be a park ranger for those two foraging and trapping levels. I also took more traits. This attempt, I decided to take things slow, crouching around so we don't get overwhelmed, taking them out one by one. After it was somewhat safe, I headed out to see how great it is to forage as a park ranger. Oh, 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 two in one. Then I did some more killing, and when it was late, I went to that building to store my fresh findings in that mini fridge. Just look at all these things that I've found. My goodness. Then I remembered something I came across earlier. The potatoes, broccoli, carrots, and other things that were growing outside. So I was wondering, how long will they take to grow? Well, let's find out. Let's see, let's see. Carrots. 10 days. My current goal is to survive 10 days so I can harvest those carrots to have enough food to survive long term. After that, I went to sleep. Day 2. I woke up and saw something beautiful and beneficial. Rain. I couldn't water those crops since I had nothing to pour the water from, so I had hoped for rain, and here we are. But anyway, a bit later, I went to do some foraging, ate some of my findings, then went to sleep. Woke up, went to do some foraging, ate some of my findings, then went to sleep. Woke up, went to do some foraging, ate some of my findings, then went to sleep. Admired the progress the potatoes are making. Went to do some foraging, yeah you get it by now. And this continued till day 10, which is when the carrots were ready for harvest. Oh look at that, oh there's so much. I put most of them in the fridge so they don't go bad quickly. Then headed off and waited 3 more days for the other carrots to become seed barren. And here we are, I did it. I've gotten myself vegetables and seeds to survive for technically forever. Now of course, I'm relying on rain to water my crops, and then there's water shut off and electricity shut off, but just listen to this. Carrots take 10 days to rot, so all the carrots that I haven't eaten will rot, but by then, I'll have more carrots, since remember, they take 10 days to grow. And if I become desperate, well, I can just go foraging. So there you have it. With the right occupation and traits, you can technically survive forever. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.